Robert Downey Jr. is officially back at Marvel. This time, he's the villain. Marvel Studios stunned fans at San Diego Comic-Con by announcing that Robert Downey Jr. will return to the MCU, but this time as Doctor Doom. The fifth major crossover film, originally titled Avengers The Kang Dynasty, has now been renamed to Avengers Doomsday, and it will focus on the classic villain Victor Von Doom instead of Kang, because he, uh, you know, got canceled. The surprising casting choice raises questions about how Robert Robert Downey, known for his iconic role as Iron Man, will transition to one of Marvel's biggest villains. Why didn't they get a new actor? How is this going to work? I have all the questions. Following the confirmation that the Russo brothers will direct Avengers 5 and Avengers Secret Wars, the reveal of Doctor Doom as the central character shocked many, including myself, and for good reasons. Few anticipated the rumors about Robert Downey coming back to the MCU to be true at all, let alone coming back to play Doom, making fans eager to see how he will embody this new role in the MCU's future. Will the original Avengers come back and fight the current team? Is this something that we want? I don't even know. It's a confusing time. Even if you follow the movies, it's hard to make sense of it this soon. The MCU is deep into its multiverse saga where multiple variants of heroes and villains from different realities, movies, timelines, and dimensions have all been well established. We've seen the MCU's Peter Parker meet and fight alongside other versions of Spider-Man from past Sony franchises like Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield. And we've seen Loki track down his own variants across timelines. The concept was further expanded with the assembly of a count Council of Kangs. Now, all of them are gone, apparently out of nowhere. However, the casting of Robert Downey Jr. as the new Doctor Doom represents the MCU's boldest use of the multiverse yet. A hero going into a villain? How? At San Diego Comic-Con in Hall H, the Russo brothers addressed a crowd of costumed Doctor Dooms, declaring, quote, as proof of the unimaginable possibilities in the Marvel multiverse, we give you the one person who could play Victor Von Doom, end quote. Following this, Robert Downey stepped forward, removed his mask, and shocked the entire world. The one person that could play him? Eh, I don't know, there's probably a few more out there. This casting decision underscores the MCU's commitment to exploring the multiverse's vast potential, and it adds a compelling twist to the ongoing saga. How is Marvel going to pull this off? How is this going to make sense? Doctor Doom is a significant threat to many heroes in the Marvel Universe, but he is primarily the arch rival of Fantastic Four, especially Reed Richards' Mr. Fantastic. The upcoming Fantastic Four movie is set in an alternate retro futuristic reality separate from the main MCU. Stay with me here. This setting supports the idea that Robert Downey's Doctor Doom is likely a darker variant of Iron Man who becomes Dune in this alternate timeline in Fantastic Four. Now it's plausible to imagine a version of Tony Stark whose ego leads him astray when faced with Reed Richards, the world's smartest man. But it's still Robert Downey Jr. Like that's the guy from, that's Doolittle, what are we doing here? The expectation that Robert Downey's Doom will debut as a villain to Marvel's first family in this alternate reality, potentially evolving into this more powerful god emperor self as seen in the 2015 Secret Wars comic event. I don't know, it's a bit hazy here. With appearances in the 2025 films Fantastic Four and Avengers Doomsday, there will be ample opportunity for the MCU to establish this version of Doom. And by ample opportunity, I mean two movies. They have two movies to establish the next Thanos. I'm calling BS, that's not gonna work. This development allows audiences to understand this character fully before the stakes are raised in a multiverse, saga-ending, Secret Wars, Avengers event. So how they're gonna do that in two movies, it seems unlikely at this point. By introducing Robert Downey's Doom in this way, the MCU can explore the complexities of his character and his journey from a variant of Tony Stark to one of the most formidable villains in the Marvel Universe. That, I'll admit, will be fun to watch. It's nice to see Robert Downey really act, you know? He was so great in Oppenheimer. Let's see him darker and a bit different this time around, sure. This approach aligns with the MCU's broader multiverse strategy offering fresh, he says in quotes, fresh and intriguing narrative possibilities while paying homage to the rich history of these characters in the comics. It's also worth noting that Captain America actor Chris Evans just made his MCU return in Deadpool and Wolverine. However, rather than playing Steve Rogers once more, Evan suited up his pre-MCU superhero role as Johnny Storm's Human Torch. However, there were only some meta nods to Captain America as a means to set up the twist that Evans was playing Johnny and not Rogers. This could certainly be a way in which Robert Downey Jr. can play Doom and it's fun and only meta acknowledgements to his past role as Iron Man rather than having it be a plot point or, you know, issue it in universe with that narrative. That would be a little harder to explain rather than just one sly joke that Deadpool makes. That being said, Doctor Doom being a dark variant of Tony Stark could end up being a major part of his character as mentioned 
mentioned before. Rather than being a more traditional Victor Von Doom who simply played by the same actor who brought Iron Man to life, however, it certainly seems that though the reasoning for Robert Downey Jr.'s casting is the former based on the Russo's wording at SDCC. So, in the Russo's we trust, whatever they have cooking, let them cook, it's usually a pretty good time. Endgame was fun, at least it was confusing, but it was fun. The concept of a Tony Stark variant becoming Doctor Doom is, it's intriguing, it's exciting, it's good development for the future of the MCU. Now we have the Fantastic Four and new stuff to look forward to, only now it's this old face that's back in it, so it's not necessarily new and fresh. This idea draws some connections to the original comics where Victor Von Doom briefly assumed the Iron Man mantle as the infamous Iron Man. This was while Tony Stark was in a coma following the events of Secret Wars and Civil War II. So that could happen on the big screen, that's okay, that's fine with me. However, it's important to note that just because Robert Downey Jr. is playing Doom, it doesn't necessarily mean that this Doom has to be a variant of Stark in any way, though it is highly plausible and would be extremely confusing if they don't address that. Because what are we doing? Why do we cast him? In the comics, Doctor Doom is known for perpetually wearing a metal mask to cover his scarred face. That's the key, he's always wearing a mask, so why they made Robert Downey as this character who's faceless is beyond me. This characteristic could allow Downey Jr. to portray a legitimate Victor Von Doom without needing to be linked to his previous role as Tony Stark. Josh Brolin was in Deadpool and he was also in the Avengers, so never say never, this could work. Marvel Studios might simply recognize the value in casting one of Hollywood's most accomplished actors in the role of one of the Marvel Universe's most important villains. Given that Downey Jr.'s proven track record as one of the MCU's most significant heroes, this casting choice does emphasize Marvel's commitment to high caliber performances in his most pivotal rules, but I'm still confused. The inclusion of Downey Jr. as Doctor Doom, whether as a variant of Tony Stark or as the canonical Victor Von Doom, offers a wealth of storytelling possibilities, maybe too much where it's a bit confusing for us. Fans can look forward to seeing how this character evolves, starting with his appearances in Fantastic Four and Avengers Doomsday right ahead of Secret Wars. So we got some time, but I'm still really confused going in. I think Marvel is quite desperate. To not bring in a Romani actor or any new actor for the matter is a little questionable. What does Robert Downey Jr. need? Like, does he need another windmill or something? He doesn't have enough money? I have lots of questions and I wanna hear from you. Comment down below all your thoughts about this casting choice. Convince me that I'm wrong. I just don't feel too excited for this one. I'm not gonna lie, at least not yet. Thanks for joining us on Top 10 Nerd and we'll see you next time. Peace. It's cool. I look like an uncle today, I think, you know? Well, this gives like uncle vibes. It gives very, hey, there he is, energy, you know? I don't know. Maybe it's just the everything about my face.